Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I am Dr. Zunaira Fez. I want to give the lecture today on the anatomy of the female genital tract. Female genital tract it consists of internal genitalia and external genitalia. Internal genitalia it includes the ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, vagina. External genitalia includes collectively called vulva, mons pubis, labia majora, labia minora, vestibule, clitoris, greater vestibular glands. Internal genitalia, ovary. Ovary it is called the intra-abdominal structure which is not covered by peritoneum. Every woman has a pair of ovaries lying on either side of the uterus. During reproductive age, the ovaries are almond-shaped, solid grayish pink in color. On average, an ovary is 3 cm long, 1.5 cm wide, and 1 cm thick. On average, an ovary is, uh, just I told you, 3 cm long, 1.5 cm wide, and 1 cm thick. Sports of the ovaries, the ovary is suspended at its position with the help of different attachments. This picture shows the attachments of the ovary. That is the ovarian ligament, mesoovarian, mesoovarium. That is the uh, mesothelium. It is uh, which is uh, attached between the ovarian. It is ovary and the fallopian tube. It is the condensation of the mesothelium, suspensory ligament of the ovary, and itself you can see the ovary which is suspended. Relationships. Anteriorly, fallopian tubes, uterovesical pouch, sphere of part of the bladder, posterior, pouch of Douglas, inferior, broad ligament and its contents, superiorly, bowel and omentum, lateral, parietal, peritoneum and pelvic side walls. You can see in the picture all these viscera and organs. Age-related changes. Intrauterine life, the ovaries, they are small in size and then situated in the lumbar region near the kidneys. Prepubertal changes, they gradually descend to lie near the brain. The ovaries are tiny elongated structures with a smooth surface and packed with brandyocytes. Reproductive age, they descend further to become intrapelvic organ and increase in size to reach the adult level. The primordial follicles start maturing, resulting in ovulation. Menopause. After the menopause, the size decreases and the ovaries have shriveled appearance. There is reduction in germ cells. Parts of the fallopian tubes. It is 10 cm long, as you can see in the picture. Ampulla, lateral half, where the fertilization occurs, commonest site of the ectopic pregnancy. Isthmus. Isthmus, it is the relatively straight medial third of the tube. Insusticial portion, 1 cm of the fallopian tube, lies within the uterine wall. Uterus, it is a pear-shaped organ, pear-shaped structure, just like the pear the fruit, which I uh, always uh, give the example, the resemblance. Cavity has inverted triangular shape. Uterus, is, its size is about 9 into 6 into 4 cm on average. Parts of the uterus, it, it, is, it consists of four parts. The area of the insertion of the each fallopian tube, which is called cornua. The portion of the uterus lying above the cornua, that is the fundus. The body lies between the cornua and the isthmus, and the junction between the body of the uterus and the cervix. Uterus. You can see in this picture the fundus of the uterus, and then for the fallopian tube on either side, and each fallopian tube it has contact with the ovary. Uterus, and then is the cervix. So uterus itself it has the endometrium, myometrium, and the outermost part it is called perimetrium. And then down it is the muscular tube, which is called vagina. Position of the uterus: anteflexion and retroflexion. Anteflexion usually the eighty percent of the uterus they are anteflexed. Commonly long axis of the body of the uterus is tilted forward over the long axis of the cervix called antiflexion of the uterus. In 80% of women, the long axis of the uterus lies at right axis of the vagina with a forward tilt, it is called antiversion. Retroflexion, a backward tilt at this level is called retroflexion. Retroversion, which is seen in 20% of the women, is a backward tilt of the uterus over the vagina. This retroflexion, 20% of women, it is the normal and sometimes 
if it is not in the normal then we call it the pathological retroversion and there are so many causes inshallah in the future lecture i will be able to tell you this also position of the uterus as you can see in this picture it is anti flexion and anti torsion so it is the angle of the uterus with the cervix and then cervix and the vagina retroflexion and retroversion when there is backward tilt of the uterus and angle it is totally reverted age related changes in the uterus prepubertal age reproductive age and postmenopausal age these three age groups their uterus size it varies uterus is small and cervix is longer than the body cervix to body ratio is 2 is to 1 in prepubertal age reproductive age group mature size the body is bigger than the cervix and cervix body ratio is 1 is to 2 postmenopausal uterus is atrophic body size is smaller than the cervix and cervix body ratio is 2 is to 1 the endometrium undergoes atrophy and the cervix gets flushed with the vagina wall vagina it is a fibro muscular tube which runs in the upward and downward direction to the cervix because of its position fornices it is the area or the area of the vagina around the cervix there is interior relation and interior posterior fornices and two lateral fornices rugis what are the rugis folds of the epithelium lining the vagina which accounts for the ability of the vagina to distend during childbirth posterior wall is longer than the anterior wall posterior wall usually 9 cm and interior wall is 6 cm hymen the thin fold of mucous membrane at the entrance of the vagina relations posterior relation in posterior relation upper third of the vagina lies in the pouch of Douglas middle third of the vagina lies in contact with the rectum lower third of the vagina is related to the perineal body interiorly upper third of the vagina lies in the relation to the base of the bladder lower third of the lower third of the vagina is related to the urethra laterally from above downward cardinal ligaments levator anal muscles ischiorectal fossae vestibular bulbs bulbous spongious muscles and bartering glands you can see this uh, this is one of the slide which is uh, really to make you relax in between the teaching happiness chemicals and how to hack them that is dopamine oxytocin serotonin serotonin and endorphin and uh, laughter is of course is the laughter is the best medicine you should do exercise walk and uh, always communicate your emotions to your love love ones and this is uh, this will create the energy and it is a key to success and happy life age related changes immediate after birth the vaginal mucous membranes resembles the adult pattern due to the exposure to the placenta estrogens pre pubertal age around 7 the lining epithelium is atrophic with a ph of around 7 reproductive age acidic ph under the influence of dodelin bacilli and postmenopausal atrophic epithelium with a ph around 7 and there is loss of adiposity external genitalia this is uh, mons pubis then clitoris labia majora and vestibule labia minora and then you can see here is the area where the greater vestibular glands it is uh, and the duct of the greater vestibular gland and this is the seat of the bartholin cyst which is very common external genitalia external genitalia commonly called vulva include the mons pubis labia majora labia minora clitoris vestibule and greater vestibular gland this is in broad labia majora the labia are two prominent folds of skin on either side of the vaginal opening covering the adipose tissue Interiorly, they fuse together over the pubic symphysis to form a deposition of fat known as mons pubis. Posteriorly, they merge with the perineum. In adult, the lateral aspects of the labia majora and mons pubis they are covered with hair, while inner aspects they are smooth. They have numerous sebaceous glands. Labia minora. The labia minora they are two vascular folds of skin lying medial to the labia majora. They contain sebaceous glands but no adipose tissue. 
anteriorly they divide into two to form the prepuce and frenulum of the clitoris posteriorly they fuse to form a fold of skin called forchette they are poorly developed before puberty and atrophy after the menopause their vascularity allows them to become turgid during sexual excitement you can see this musculature of the external genitalia that is the clitoris and ischiocavernous muscle bulbospongius muscle these are the greater vestibular gland you can see this in the picture in the diagram transverse perineal muscles levator and eye muscle external anal sphincter clitoris this is a small erectile structure 2.5 cm long homologous with the penis but not containing the urethra the body of the clitoris contains two crura the corpora cavernosa which are attached to the inferior border of the pubic rami the clitoris is covered by the ischiorectus ischiocavernous muscle while bulbous pongeus inserts into its root the clitoris has highly developed cutaneous nerve supply and is the most sensitive sensitive organ during the sexual arousal vestibule it is the cleft between the labia minora into it opens the vagina urethra the parourethral that is skinny's ducts and the ducts of greater vestibular bartering glands the vestibular vestibular bulbs there are two masses of the erectile on either side of the vaginal opening it contains rich plexus of the veins within the bulbous pongeous muscles bartering glands each about the size of pea lie at the base of the each bulb and open via a 2 cm long duct into the vestibule between the hymen and the labia minora these are mucus secreting glands and produce copious amount during intercourse to act as lubricant they are compressed by contraction of the bulbous pongeus muscle perineal body this is a um, fibromuscular mass occupying the area between the vagina and anal canal perineal body is composed of insertion of the levator and i transverse perineal that is the superficial and deep then bulbous pongeosus ischiocavernosus and external anal sphincter muscles it supports the lower part of the vagina is of variable length it is frequently torn during child birth age related changes in the external genitalia at birth the hair are absent there is deposition of the adipose tissue in the labia majora and mons pubis under the influence of the placental estrogens pre pubertal the hair are still absent but adipose tissue decreases in amount reproductive age hair grow on mons pubis and lateral aspects of the labia majora adipose tissue reappears the vaginal opening tends to widen after child birth menopause the skin atrophies and becomes thinner and drier the labia minora shrinks subcutaneous fat is lost and the vaginal orifice becomes smaller so you can see in this diagram the blood supply to the female reproductive organ this is the main is the aorta and then from the aorta is the ovarian artery it is the branch and then common iliac artery and it divides further into the external internal and then from the internal iliac artery the uterine artery it uh, uh, takes its pathway towards the uterus and these are the multiple spiral arteries you can see and arcuate arteries this is the uterine fallopian tube and the ovary and this is the rich this is the plexus of the blood supply you can see here and again lymphatic drainage of the uterus you can see paraiotic lymph nodes that lateral aortic lymph nodes internal iliac lymph nodes external and wherever the vessel name and there is the same name of the lymph nodes you can see and then superficial inguinal lymph nodes sacral lymph nodes external lymph nodes are there nerve supply of the female reproductive and you can see the main is the genito femoral nerve and pudendal nerve perineal branch of the posterior femoral now it is the main supply thank you is all